Hey there guys and girls. I want to take a few minutes to kind of help you out with question number five on the Hooke's Law worksheet. Because in this situation we have to incorporate not only new stuff about Hooke's Law, but also stuff we're currently learning about Newton's Third Law, where we have to analyze a system. So in question five we have a system of objects, and at point A we put a small spring in there. So I'm just going to like sketch in a spring real quick. And our job, given the spring constant of that spring, is to figure out how far it's going to stretch when we release these two blocks from rest. So just like any force situation, the first thing we should do is draw a free body diagram. So for this guy, we've got weight going down, and then the tension in the string going up. So let me label those real quick. I'm going to call that FG1. I'm going to call this the tension in the string. And then on the other one, we've got weight going down, normal force going up, and then that same tension on the string. So my free body diagram would look like this. Call that FG2 and Fn. So I know when I release these things that both objects are going to accelerate the 6 kilogram objects can accelerate that way, and the 4 kilogram object will accelerate that direction. So that's the direction I'm going to use for positive net force when I write my net force equations. So on the red object, the one that's hanging, I'm going to write that the net force equals the weight minus the tension. And then on the other, I'm going to write that the net force is simply equal to the tension. So since, they're acceler since the 6 kilogram object is accelerating to the left, I'm just going to worry about the horizontal forces. And since the 4 kilogram object is down, I only have to worry about the vertical forces. Then we do that trick where we add the two equations together to get the net force on the system as a whole. So the tensions would cancel out, leaving me with just the weight of the one that's hanging. So just Fg1. So when I go and apply Newton's second law, I can determine that the acceleration on the system, which will be the net force on the system, over the mass of the system would simply be equal to the sum of the masses, which would be 10 kilograms, over the weight of just object 1. So Fg1 would be like 40 newtons. And that would give me the acceleration of the system. So like a system right there. And so the acceleration of this particular system would be 4 meters per second squared. Now remember that that's the acceleration of both objects. So now that I know the acceleration of the system, I can go back to either of my net force equations. I'm going to use the purple one because it's simpler and solve for that missing tension force. So I can say the net force on the purple object, the 6 kilogram one, would be 6 kilograms times 4 meters per second squared, which is equal to 24 newtons. Since the net force on object 2 is just equal to the tension in that string, now I know what the tension in the string is. And because the um, spring that we put in there is basically part of the spring, I now know that the force exerted by the spring is 24 newtons. So throughout that whole string, the force has to be constant. It's got to be the same 24 newtons. So now I can 
use Hooke's Law, solve for x, and then just plug in what I've got. I've got a spring force of 24 newtons. The spring constant is 500 newtons per meter. That's from the Gibbons. And so that's going to give me a stretch of like 0 0.048, I believe, meters, which is just less than 5 centimeters, which is a reasonable stretch for a spring. So what we may still be struggling with is this whole part right here. We should be getting better at it. Hopefully practice is paying off. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that we had that part right because we're going to need it for the lab that we do um, on Thursday. Thursday for you guys. Um, so use that to kind of help you uh, do question five on here. It would also help if you did question two on the connected objects worksheet. And then you'll understand how to find the predicted acceleration for the Atwoods Machine Lab we're doing in class next time. So I hope this was helpful. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.